Hello guys, welcome to another video. In this video, we would be seeing on hybrid tables in Snowflake. So there are another kind of tables uh, other than external tables, Apache Iceberg tables and the Snowflake managed tables. Uh, there are new tables called hybrid tables in which the data is stored in the row based format and it is used mostly for the OLTP systems where you want the quick retrieval of the data and all. So if you see the like, uh, this is a special type of table designed for low latency, fast and handle many transactions at once. Like if you have multiple operations which needs to be done on a single table, then we can go with the hybrid tables as well because this table has the row locking concept where if any of the row is uh, being updated, it locks that row and other user can update other rows in this uh, same table. Whereas the, the default snowflake tables are not supporting the row level locking, they support the uh, partition or a table level locking. And also if you see it uses the index based method to quickly read and write small pieces of data. What are the key features? It's a row based storage. Data is stored in the row rows which is why we get the data so quickly when we query. And also row locking as I said like some multiple users can update the same table and data integrity. So I mean this hybrid table enforces the unique and referential integrity constraint like we should have the mandatory primary key and other uh, constraints on the table so that we maintain the referential integrity in this table. And when to use this kind of hybrid tables? Hybrid tables are used with scenarios where the thousands of operations update the same table at a time like multiple operations are happening on the same table at a time and where the data in the table is already summarized and if you want to use that summarized data uh, for the dashboards or API for the quick retrieval instead of uh, calculating the complex logics by joining the multiple tables if, if, if that is already done and created a target table then you can then we can have the target table as hybrid table where the data is already calculated and stored so that it, we can just uh, query the table and use and the third thing is lightweight transactions like for, for the OLTP systems we can say it as we use hybrid tables. So let's see a few comparisons between hybrid tables and the um, Snowflake standard tables. Okay, this is row oriented format with an extra backup of the column or storage. So what happens is like in this hybrid tables, the ideal storage is like row oriented only. But there is another process which asynchronously copies this data in the column or format uh, to the object stores like what is the object store you are using like S3 or Azure containers or whatever you are using. The asynchronous process will be copying this data into columnar storage as well so that if any of the OLAP queries come and uh, execute the queries in these uh, tables, it, it decides like there will be optimizer here. There is, there is optimizer here. This optimizer decides whether to query the data from the row oriented uh, tables or query with the columnar storage. Based on this optimized addition, the data is fetched from the uh, respective uh, place the optimizer decides from where which we can get the response faster and it it, it is uh, pr proceeded accordingly and the standard table rely entirely on the columnar storage but it has the row, row oriented and also the columnar storage as well it doesn't mean like all each and every row which exists in the row oriented will also be columnar will be stored again in the columnar storage in the object store that's not the right some part of the data is asynchronously copied into the columnar storage and the optimizer decides based on the query where to go whether to the row oriented storage or to the columnar storage and it has a locking mechanism on the row level and uh, standard tables have a locking mechanism on the table level or a partition level like the hybrid tables enforces a primary key foreign key and unique constraints for sure on the table foreign key is not a mandatory thing but the primary key for a table is mandatory in the hybrid tables but in the standard tables this is not a mandatory thing and here the one of the ways why we are getting the data quicker is because of the indexes only hybrid tables uses indexes concept we know indexes right like indexes in the book the same concept which we have in the legacy systems the same indexes is being used in hybrid tables to get the results faster I mean in hybrid tables the indexes are updated right away but in the standard tables uh, it, it is not updated immediately whenever the value is changed and all. It's immediately updated in the uh, hybrid tables but not in the standard tables. And now you, let's see the architecture details about the hybrid tables. So now if you look at the architecture if, if you see this first point unified connection. So even the C hybrid tables also use the same uh, database service the same query engine the same virtual warehouses which we have for the 
other uh, standard tables the same architecture is being followed and the second thing is query processing queries are compiled and optimized in the snowflake cloud service layer so whenever you query so the the queries are first uh, optimized or the compiled in the cloud service layer using you with this optimizer then that optimizer decides whether to read the data from the row format stored data or go and read from the columnar data which is stored in the object store so this query optimizer decides where to go as we discussed already and the next thing is like it has a dual storage system as we said it stores the data in the row format immediately whenever we do an insert or a write operation but in the background the data is also asynchronously copied to the object store for large analytical scans some of the data can be captured in the columnar format this ensures that analytical queries can run efficiently without slowing down the transactional operations so based on like if the query optimizer feels like this is an analytical query and it has to fetch a large amount of data scenarios like that then it goes and queries from the columnar storage or else it just returns from the row storage only the the snowflake process or the snowflake optimizer decides where to go and also they are atomic and the joins are supported we can join the standard snowflake table and the hybrid uh, snowflake table all these two different tables if you want the data is stored in this nodes shared nodes which like similar to the standard snowflake tables here but it it's they are stored separately and we have the warehouse and we have the first layer cloud service layer where the query is first optimized and decided where to query and if you see i mean i could not run and check this in the free version of the snowflake that's why i have to just paste out the screenshot like it we can create this hybrid table using three ways one is see it as like how you have created here or here or else we can use the insert statements or else you can use the copy into commands as well the three processes are supported for the hybrid tables and if you see like we can we have to create this constraints mandatory and also we can even create this indexes as well which will help in the fast retrieval of the data if in case if we query based on this index that's it the updates relation everything is supported as usual that's it thank you so much for watching